Hallelujah. Would you stand with us tonight? Father God, we just come to worship you. We come to glorify you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yanamase.
Can you sing it with me? Just the voices. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, your glory, God is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Let me know the kisses of your mouth, feel your embrace. Let me smell the fragrance. Every touch, see your lovely face. Oh, take me away. Even so, Lord, come. Let me know the kisses. Smell the fragrance of your touch. See your lovely face. So take me away. Even so, Lord, come. I love you, Lord.
when you say this, I trust you, Lord. Because I trust you, Lord. Yes, I do. I trust you with my life. Oh, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Trust you with my life. Oh, I trust you, Lord. I trust you with my
worship you right now. Lord, it is well with our soul. Can we just say that together right now? It is well with our soul. It is well with our soul. You know, when everything's going good and it is well with your soul, that's easy to say. But when things happen and you don't understand, when things happen and you don't like it, when things happen and you don't want to think it's true. But that's when you need to really know. It is well with my soul. That's when you need to know. That's when you need to know. Not when everything's going good. But when you, when you don't understand, you know it is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. You go ahead and have a seat this evening. It's going to be a little bit of a different service tonight. I told my husband, I said, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Tonight we, tonight's our regular evening service, so we're receiving our regular tithes and offerings tonight. Ushers, if you can um, 
Go ahead and serve the people. If you'd like to give tonight, go ahead and raise your hand and the ushers will come. You know, I wanted to apologize to you for um, our lighting. We're working on our lighting. We, we had really wanted them to fix our lights on the stage and our lights everywhere else, and they did. But then all the lights that are on, the people kind of are off, and so we're, we're trying to fix that right now. So just as much light as we're going to get out there. But we really like the way the stage looks now, amen? But I'd like you to go with me to Matthew 6, 19. There's a lot I, I would like to say, but I know my husband has a lot to say, so I'm going to go there. I want to thank all the pastor, Pastor Rashes from Bakersfield are here, the Reynas from down south, and then Pastor White, Pastor Mark from down south also. I don't... Vincent from Bakersfield, we have so much friends and family here, amen. Pastor, I can't hear, pa Pastor Carlos, what are you doing back there? Pastor Gordon, oh my gosh, oh my goodness, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Thank you guys for coming, amen. Very, very special people, amen. You know, I was, the, today as I was thinking about this evening's service, I told my husband, I, I don't have a scripture, I don't know what to say, I don't know I just don't know what to do. And he said, do you want me to do it? And I said, no, no, no. I said, I will. I just need the Holy Spirit to talk to me. And as I began to get ready, I went to my jewelry drawer and I pulled out these earrings. And these earrings are a gift that my earthly father gave me. My earthly father went to be with the Lord in uh, 2001. In the same year, we came under the covering of Dr. Jerry Seville. He became my spiritual father. So all those memories came rushing to me and I said, I, I thank the, the Lord that I still have these, these mementos of my earthly father. And I began to think of all the things that my spiritual father has imparted in my life. All those things that my spiritual father has imparted in my life that will not ever go away. The word of faith that he has taught me the word to stand in favor and to stand for every area of my life. And this scripture the Lord gave to me. And he said, and this is a scripture, Matthew 6, 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that Pastor Seville's treasure was in heaven. Can you imagine when you walk through those gates and everybody, how long was the line of people coming up to him saying, thank you. Thank you for going to the nations. How long was that line? How long was, was who was there waiting for him? But for him to be, to, for us to know what a giver, what a sower, what, what, what treasure he left in all of our hearts. What a difference he left in every single one of us. I know for me, my life has, and my children, the trajectory of my children's lives and the life of this ministry has for, was forever changed when we came under the covering of him almost 23 years ago. God is so good. And I'll tell you this, today as you give your tithe and offering to your local church. Your tithe, if you're here visiting, belongs in your house, not in this house. If you'd like to give an offering, thank you. But your tithe belongs in your local house. So are, are you sowing, are you giving with a purpose? Are you sowing and you giving with a, a purpose to say, you know what, Lord, thank you for blessing me. Thank you for all the material things that I have. But God, I'm not going to forget your house. God, I'm not going to forget the things that you've done for me. So, Lord, I'm here to sow and I'm here to give. Amen. So as you prepare your, your offering, you ask yourself, am I laying up treasures in heaven or am I laying up treasures for myself? I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that I'm laying up treasures in heaven. Amen. So go ahead and stand with me. And here at West Coast Believer Center, we bring our offering to, to the altar willingly we give our offering to the lord and we ask that you write something in the back that we could pray for we write those things down we send them to our prayer team and they pray for you weekly and we love not only when you give us a 
a praise request, a prayer request. But when you write on that prayer, uh, on that tithing envelope, when it got answered, we love that too. So make sure that you're doing that. So go ahead and come right now and, and sow your seed and pastor will come up and pray over you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're the same yesterday and today and forevermore. We thank you, Lord, that your loving kindness, mighty God, it's for a lifetime, it's for an eternity. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to worship you tonight, Lord, with our tithes and our offerings. Lord, we return that which is holy, Lord, to your house, mighty God. Lord, that there may be meat in your house. And I confess and I pray, Lord, open heavens, Lord, over every tither right now. Lord, I pray for tither rights, Lord, to be in full effect. Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, also, Lord, for the giver tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you that every good gift, Lord, every good thing in our lives, Lord, it has come from above. It has come from you. And, Lord, tonight, Lord, we worship you, Lord, with an offering. Lord, a token, Lord, of our love, our appreciation, our trust, our thankfulness, for all that you have done, Lord, you are the source and the supply of our lives. And, Lord, you've enriched us in so many different ways. So I pray, Lord, bless every tither, every giver, Lord, every person in this room. And, Lord, those that have joined us online, Lord, around the world, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we are allowed to worship you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you more than anything, Lord, that you could ever give us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Come on, stretch your hands towards these tithes and offerings. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give, mighty God. And Lord, I present to you, Lord, the holy tithe, Lord, and the offering. I pray, Lord, multiply it, increase it. And Lord, cause it to come back in the form of an extravagant harvest, Lord, in the homes and in the lives of your people. Lord, I pray blessings upon them, mighty God. And we thank you, Lord, that they'll have a surplus over necessity, Lord, that they will have more than enough, Lord, to live the way they want to live, to give the way they want to give, and to fulfill all, Lord, that you put in their hearts to do. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you agree with that, shout amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good to be with you all tonight. I just cannot express how thankful I am. Why don't you give the worship team a hand clap too. Amen. Praise God. Put my glasses. Oh, there you guys all are. All right. I want to thank you for coming tonight. It means something very special to me. I know, um, you know, that, that many of you have been praying for us and praying for everyone that's divinely connected, you know, to Dr. Jerry Seville and I know that as a congregation, I know that I'm not the only one that's been grieving. I know that, you know, he's been the apostle of this house since you showed up, <laughs> you know, and before you showed up. You know, for the last 22 years, we have had the privilege, amen, of having, you know, him be our spiritual father and to be the covering over not only this ministry, but over our lives. And I thank God that, you know, um, that though he's entered in, amen, to... To his reward, amen, I thank God that we are left with all of the amazing things that he imparted into us, amen. You ought to give him a clap right now, amen. Your life's been touched and blessed. This, what, a, what a beautiful man, what a beautiful legacy. Um, you know, I know that he's made a mark in every one of our lives that cannot be erased, amen. And uh, he's, no long, he's not in your past, how many know? He's not in your past, how many know? He's in our future, Amen. He's there in heaven. Amen. Saying it was worth it. Amen. Finish, finish strong. Amen. I know that he's celebrating and he's being celebrated. Though we're here. Amen. We don't grieve for where he's at. We grieve for his absence because, man, we long to be with him. We long to, to, to have those moments that we've been able to share here. Uh, but now we're going to have to wait till we get to heaven and uh, and so we can fix everything in him that pa him and Pastor Juan have done <laughs> while they're up there without us, amen. But uh, I am very honored, um, very honored to have all of my friends here. You guys have come a long way to 
give us some love. And um, I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate your love and your support, my friends. It says a lot. You know, I said this um, on Sunday night while Dr. Seville was here. You know, time is such a beautiful thing. You know, it's very precious and it's very important. And one of the only things that's more important than time is who you spend it with. And I love spending time with all of the people that are in this room. I love you all very, very much. Those of you that are joining us online, I know we got friends and family from all over the world. We welcome you tonight. Amen. Our prayers are with you. Amen. And in, in, in how you're processing all of this. And uh, I just pray for God's graces just to be multiplied to each and every one of us. Amen. Uh, I think this is going to be a little bit of a different service. Might be even a little bit different than what you expected. You know, uh, I've been having, you know, my moments just like anyone else. It just kind of comes in waves, you know, when you, you know, you think about people that you love. But I'll be honest with you, about an hour and a half ago, man, it was like Christmas came early for me. Now I'm telling you, the joy of the Lord is all up in me. And I am so happy, so happy knowing, amen, that my pastor... Amen. Fulfilled everything that God called him to do. He finished strong. Amen. He broke the greatest barrier. Amen. That he's ever faced before. Amen. Heaven cracked wide open. Amen. And his entrance. Amen. Was there. And I just rejoice in knowing that. I rejoice in knowing that I followed someone that finished. I followed someone. Amen. That left a mark. I thank God I followed somebody. Amen. Who changed the world. Amen. An example. An example that we can still follow. Amen. A standard that we can still live up to. Amen. And as a, uh, you know, as a son in the faith, my prayer is, amen, that I honor that legacy in how I handle the things that were entrusted and imparted into me. Somebody say amen. amen. I pray that is your prayer as well. Amen. And so I do have some things I want to share with you guys tonight. Uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I want to say thank you also. On behalf of Miss Carolyn and the family, uh, West Coast, you did things this week that you're not even aware of yet. Amen. You've been there for them. And, and that right there is where my attention has been the most uh, uh, since Monday is just making sure that my spiritual mother and the family has anything that can be carried by us. Amen. And when I say us, I'm talking about all of us. We've, we've done our very best to carry what's been entrusted to us. And, uh, and, I, and I know that it's, it's, it's been appreciated and it's just our honor to be able to, to do that because Dr. Seville was not my only spiritual parent. You know, our mother's still among us and, uh, and I just say thank you to every one of you that have been praying for her, amen, and praying for the family, amen. And uh, we'll go over some things here in a little while, but I wanna go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And uh, I, I want to get right into what the Lord put inside of my spirit, amen. And I pray that it will edify you. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 25, 11, that a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold encased in silver. Isn't that beautiful? And my prayer is that the words that I speak tonight, that, that it will be like honey on my lips, amen. That it will minister grace to you, that it will minister peace to you, that it will bring strength, amen, and hope, and, uh, and that it'll, it'll, it'll comfort you, amen, in how you're grieving and how you're processing things. How I many know the Bible says there's a time for us to grieve, and that time's now, amen, and there's a time to rejoice, amen. I'm choosing to do both, amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, mighty God, for who you are, Lord, I cannot sing of your praise enough, Lord. Your goodness, Lord, is everlasting. And I thank you, Lord, that there is none before you, none above you, none beside you, Lord. You are in a class all of your own. And, Lord, we are your sons and your daughters. And, Lord, we are here to acknowledge your greatness. Lord, we are here to acknowledge the wonder of who you are. And I thank you, mighty God, for your unfailing love. I thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every day. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word is true, Lord, that you do what you said you would do. And I just receive today, Lord, with everyone in this room and those that are watching, Lord, we receive the graces, Lord, that you provide. And we receive the comfort in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit... You're the only one that can bring comfort when we feel discomfort. And we thank you for peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray, Lord, let it be upon every one of us, Lord, 
upon everyone that has been near and dear to Dr. Seville's heart and all the people who his life has touched and changed. Lord, I pray, Lord, be with every one of us, Lord, as we reflect, Lord, on his part and his life and our story and how our lives have been changed and how our lives and our ministries are better because of his influence, Lord. And we thank you for sending him to us, Lord. We thank you for that great apostle of faith. We thank you, Lord. He taught us how to win, mighty God. He taught us how to stay strong. Lord, he taught us, mighty God, Lord, so many beautiful things. And, Lord, we thank you for every one of those messages. Lord, we thank you for every one of those precious moments. And I just pray tonight, Lord, that you would minister through me. I pray, Lord, that I'd speak as an oracle of God. Lord, that your word would be on my mind, Lord, on my lips, Lord. That you would anoint the very breath that I breathe, Lord. And I pray, Lord, to you be all glory and honor, Lord. Let this be none of me and all of you, I ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You know, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, it says that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor, favor rather than silver and gold. And I, and I love the way the Amplified says this. It says a good name that is earned by honorable behavior, godly wisdom, Moral courage and personal integrity, man, doesn't that define our pastor, is more desirable than great riches and favor is better than silver and gold. Amen. It's a beautiful thing when you have a good name. How many know the devil's got to kill your name before he can kill your ministry? Amen. And it's a beautiful thing when you have a good name because your name will speak volumes. You know, and when the name of Jerry Seville is mentioned, you know, there are so many things that come with that. So many things that people, you know, uh, uh, memories and so many uh, factors that come to mind. When I, when I think of my spiritual father, I, I think of a man of great faith. I think of the most generous person I've ever had the pleasure of knowing and following. And when I think of him, I think of soul winning. I think about a man that had compassion, a man that was driven by the love of God, amen, a man that wasn't afraid to speak the truth, amen, a man that would correct even at the highest levels, <laughs> amen, if he thought people were going to be influenced by error, he would speak up and he would set the record straight, how many of you know that's a friend you want to have, the Bible says faith for the wounds of a friend and the kisses of an enemy, and uh, we've all enjoyed, amen, uh, this wonderful time that we've had with them, some more than others. You know, how, how many years have you known Dr. Seville, Doc? 45. About 45 years. I'm super jealous of you, man. S so many people, amen, in here. Miss Tony, her, and Dr. Rogers, you guys were the first ones that ever invited us, you know, didn't know who we were, <laughs> invited us to go out to dinner. Uh, with Dr. Seville. This was before we were ever connected. We just knew that we were supposed to, to be, a, be at every meeting he had. And, man, uh, all I had was $100, man, to last us to drive all over California. We drove uh, to... Uh, 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 yeah, we went to Delano. That's our first time we met Pastor Kathy and Pastor Juan. Uh, I remember it was raining cats and dogs. You guys had all those crazy bushes out in the front, those that oleanders, man. I remember that. And uh, I remember during that time we went to, uh, was it, An no, Lancaster. We went to uh, uh, Dr. Wood's church over, you know, in Pomona. Amen. We went to Torrance. Uh, uh, we, and we wound up on the coast with Pastor, you know, with the, the, the Rogers. And, and, uh, and we just knew we were supposed to be there. And God just positioned us. Every time we went in, it's like we had favor. It's like they would sit us in place, you know, in a good place and then, uh, they'd always like, if Dr. Seville wasn't sitting right in front of us, then uh, they would move him to where we were sitting. It was almost uncanny how it was happening. And uh, we, you know, so every time he turned around for the meet and greet, there I was standing with my big head and my beautiful wife, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, and, and it, was, it was just an honor. And then when we were invited to dinner, oh my gosh, I was so nervous. I couldn't eat and I didn't have enough money to eat either. So uh, I just was, yeah, yeah. But I couldn't eat. No, I was just like, oh, my gosh, hey, you know, what's going on here? And during that time when we were at Dr. Wood's church, uh, 
I was getting ready to go to Africa for the first time. And God had just spoken to me about pastoring. And Dr. Seville said, I want to pray for you. He said, but I want to pray for you. He said, well, there's a strong anointing to do it. He said, you're going to be at the meeting tomorrow. I said, yes, sir. And uh, during that trip, we were the only people he prayed over the whole trip. He didn't lay hands on nobody. And it was just something special for us, you know. And it was the beginning of an adventure. First time in first contact we had with Dr. Seville. I remember I was walking through my mom's house and she had the television on and I seen this man on TV wearing this crazy reflective armor, you know, <laughs> with arrows all over the shield, arrows all over. He looked like a turkey, you know, had so many arrows in the, you know, on the rear side. And, and I remember going, what is this? And it, 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 it caught my attention to where I found myself sitting down and I watched, you know, him preach this message. Now, I didn't know who he was. It wasn't until about 14 years ago. We were at the bookstore at Heritage of Faith and I'm, I'm going through there, you know, looking to see if there's anything in there I don't own. And I seen the video, The Stand. And I was like, oh my Lord, it was him. It was him. And it, it just, you know, just blessed me something good going, Lord, look at you. You already had a destiny for us to connect, you know, back then. And uh, just so, so, so blessed by, you know, uh, those things, you know, and, and his mark, again, that he, he made upon our lives, you know. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1, and I'm just following the Lord here. I appreciate you guys working with me tonight. It says, a good name is better than precious perfume, and the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. Mm, let that sink in. Can we put that scripture up on the screen? It says, a good name is better than precious perfume, and the day of one's death better than the day of one's birth. Now, how many know it's better for the one that's going, especially when they know they're going to heaven? Now, for us that remain, amen, we're left with that absence. But the day, amen, when you have a good name, when you know that you've lived a life, amen, to where good things are attached to it. Because how many of you, your name means something, you know? I can start dropping names right now, and, 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 and you'll have things that attach to it. You know what I'm saying? If I said Mike Tyson, some of you might be thinking about the fight that's coming up. Some of you might grab your ear and go, oh, yeah, Mike Tyson. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, uh, there's just things that come when names are mentioned. Your name means something. And it's a beautiful thing when you establish what your name's going to mean. Because sometimes, you know, you're born into families that might not have a good name. I remember every time the police would mess with me in the city that I grew up from, I had a brother that liked, he was a runner. So cops always had to run whenever... We got in trouble. So anytime, you know, they had my last name, you know, Bolger, the first thing they did was they're getting ready to, I was got handcuffed for nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, I am not my brother. I'm not going to run from you. I'm not going to, you know, because our name meant something. Even, even when God started sending me to Ireland, the first time I met Pastor Solomon, you guys all know Pastor, he's been to this house, you know, before, great man. And the moment he heard my last name, he said, you need to come to, he goes, you know, there's a, he says, there's a famous gangster from Ireland. That's what he's telling me, Pastor White. Famous gangster from Ireland, Whitey Bolger. I'm like, here it comes. And, uh, and I said, yeah, you know, is my, my grandfather's cousin. He goes, you need to come to Ireland. He says, people need to hear that somebody good came out of your family. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm here to redeem it. Amen. The name. And, uh. His church happened to be just 15-minute drive away from the little town that my family's from in Ireland, uh, in and, uh But, you know, just there's things about a name, you know. I remember God was teaching me things about the power of a person's name, the meaning that you give it by the way that you live. You know, if you ever do a word study, I'll just throw this out there for free. I remember studying the names of the spies that went into the promised land. Man, when you study their names, these guys had names that you'd be like, man, I wish that was my name. 
Because they had names that had a meaning, you know, I'm literally a meaning, like, like God's my banker. There was a guy that that was pretty much his name, God's my banker. Another guy, you know, God's my victory. Vince, good to see you, brother. All these powerful names, the Lord is the strength of my life. They had all these amazing names, but these are all the guys that said we're grasshoppers. And then you had Joshua, you know, you know, his name, you know, Yeshua over here. You know, and then you had Caleb. And I'm like, so when I seen all these guys' names, I'm like, man, come on, tell Joshua and Caleb, the only two that went into the promised land, right? Even Moses didn't get a go. I was like, man, I, and I knew Joshua's name because I shared that amazing name. But Caleb, I'm like, man, come on, the guy that was, you know, like 80 plus years old, and he's like, give me my mountain. I'm just as strong today as the day that we left Egypt, amen. Give me my mountain. I was like, man, what's his name? I looked up his name. It said uh, incontinent, uh, dog, literally male coat prostitute. I was like, that was his name. How'd you like growing up with that name? But how many know when you think of him, you think of what I said first. Give me my mountain. He changed what his name meant. Dr. Seville, his name means something in the world. Amen. People recognize that name. That name has tremendous value. You know, and we look at his beginnings, which many of us know his stories, but man, we are the ones that have been graced to be able to see his finish. Amen. He showed us you can live this life, amen, in the midst of a crooked world, a world that's without hope, without God. You can live this life, amen. Doesn't matter if you come from the backside of Louisiana, come on. Doesn't matter where you come from, you can thrive, amen, and enjoy heaven on earth earth amen if you live the way i live you can have what i have that's what he showed us you can live by faith got to reward that faith and that faithfulness amen his name has tremendous value and i know when it comes to times like this and the things amen you're with people passing us as pastors amen this isn't something that we're not unfamiliar with you know uh it's something that we do. We're there for you and your families. When you come into the world, when you leave the world, when your children, you know, graduate, when they get married, you know, we're there for everything. And when it comes to, you know, death, it's not something people like talking about. You know, it's something that makes people uncomfortable because it, it causes us to think about the totality, the, the reality that life is a vapor. Amen. You can be here one day and gone the next. I mean, how many of us thought Sunday night, amen, when we gave our amen and, and we were thanking the man of God for speaking here, how many of us thought that Monday, you know, he would be in glory? None of us thought that. What's well, the same thing with you and I? And so I just want to talk just a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you like a smorgasbord today. Amen. How many of you ever been to Costco on the weekends? <laughs> Some of you going, it's coming up, Pastor. That's what saves me from taking my family out to lunch. Amen. We're going to Costco. <laughs> You know, we're going to get a little bit of that, a little bit of this. I'm, I'm going to give you what the Lord put in my heart. And, and so I was just thinking about these things. And I'm like, you know, because when you're a believer, you understand that it's just a transition. You know, what's on the other side of death is stunning. Stunning. I mean, heaven is, is so amazing. It is beyond your imagination how amazing and how beautiful and how wonderful heaven is. It's beyond your imagination. And hell is so bad and so wicked, so nasty. It's beyond, amen, your ability to comprehend how nasty it is. And when we as believers, when we leave this earth, understand this, nobody's taking us when we leave. You know what I'm saying? We, we're not being taken. Amen. We're not passing. How many know when a person goes from this life to the other life? How many know they're not passing away? They are arriving. Yes. We're arriving. Amen. And, and what's beautiful is that, man, when you go to heaven, if you've been sick, let me tell you something. This is, this is some of the weirdest stuff you're going to hear, but it is absolute truth. If, if, I'm, if I'm off, you know, the bishop of California will correct me. But I'm telling you, it's, it's the ultimate healing. Amen. Amen. Death is the ultimate healing. Amen. I mean, great things happen in that. And, and, and the truth of the matter is this, is that if you are here, if you are not dead, you are not done. Amen. Amen. And every one of us, amen, every one of us have a work to do. 
Every one of us have a life to live. Amen. We are stewards of this life. And I remember talking to the Lord because I've buried a lot of people in my life. I've buried children. I've buried, I've buried infants that only had a, a, a family that only have 10 minutes with that child. And, you know, it causes people, everybody always wise, usually the first word that comes out of us when people pass, especially good people, you know. Have you ever wondered why do the good die young? Or how come you got some folks live like the devil that live, you know, to 120 and you got folks that live for God and died at 33? And I don't question God, but I ask God questions. I'm like, God, I want to know why. And so what I'm going to share with you, I pray that this will minister to you. I said, God, I want to know why is that sometimes? And he said, Josh, he said, everything about you, he goes, you were not created to die. We were created to live. We're made in the image of God. But because of the curse, things got changed. He said, and it's okay. He says, you know, again, you're, you're, you're created to live. He said, that's why you can take an organ out of your body, put it in somebody else's body, and they can live with that organ. You know, that's why you can take one person's blood, give it to someone else, and they can live. The life's in the blood. He says, you know, that you're, everything about you shows there's life. He says, and, and it's okay, he says, for people to stand upon the word of God and to stand upon the promises of God and the scriptures that says with long life, God will satisfy you and show you his great salvation that has been given to a man or a woman to have up to 120 years. He said, it's okay, he said, for people to have faith in that and release their faith. He said, but what people sometimes often misunderstand is that you are there with an assignment. An assignment. He says, and when that assignment is completed, he said, I do not need to keep you on the earth when you're done. And he brought up, you know, the apostle Paul to me. You know, to where you'll remember when he finished, he said, man, I've run the race. Man, I've finished the course. There's a crown waiting for me. Man, I, you know, I've fought the good fight of faith. You know, I've run the race. And this is what he told them. I'm going to paraphrase it. He was telling the church, he said, the Lord's already told me I'm free to leave this place. He said, I'm done. He said, man, I've completed this, man. I have not only finished my course, which is you making it to heaven. He said, I've completed the ministry that was entrusted to me. Because it's not enough for you to get to heaven if you don't fulfill why you were left on the earth. Amen. Because every one of us is going to stand before the white throne of God and give a resume for everything that we have done with this life. Amen. And, 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 and so it's important for us to understand that. But the apostle Paul said, I'm done. He said, but I'm going to stay a little while longer for your sakes. He said, but you need to understand I'm done. And how many know most times people stayed longer in the Bible? There are some of the worst kings. Some folks didn't do good with having years added to them, you know. And then the Lord said, you know, because I'm like, why do, the, why do some die young? And he, and he mentioned Jesus. He said, my son was 33 years old when he died on that cross. He said, Is, would you call that young? I said, yeah, that's young. He said, but what did he say? It is finished. Now, I'm here to tell you, we as a people sometimes have our definition of what a full life is. But what I've learned is that God knows when your life's full. You can have a full life being a month old. You can have a full life being 100 years old. But when it's full, when you come to that place, like, you know, uh, Kenneth Hagin, you know, had said, Papa Hagin, he said, you know, when I'm satisfied, that's when I'm going to leave. Isn't that what he said? Now, I'm here to tell you, I know Dr. Seville was satisfied. Amen. Can we please, please uh, bring the lights down and play that little video clip real quick? This right here, what, what you're going to see was what Dr. Seville, a portion of what he ministered Sunday morning in San Diego. I have a wonderful past. I've, I've been in the ministry now since 1969. And I have a wonderful past. But I can't live in the past. I have great memories of, of some phenomenal things that God is, has done in my life. In fact, that song we sang earlier about all my life, you have been faithful. I don't know who wrote that, but they had me in mind. That's my testimony. All my life, 
All my life, he's been faithful. All my life, he's been good to me. I don't know why I'm his favorite child. I just am. And, and don't feel bad because you do come a close second, okay? Praise God. No, he, he's been so good to me, he makes me feel that way, that I must be his favorite child. Amen. But I know he's no respecter of person. He doesn't love me anymore and he loves you. But he's been so good that it, I've said often, if, if I was to, to leave this planet and go to heaven tonight, I could say, God has been extremely good to Jerry Savelle, and I could have been very possibly his favorite child. That's how good he's been to me. I mean, I, I've enjoyed living under the umbrella of his favor all of my Christian life. Amen. Who would have known he was prophesying to himself? Only God knew. And uh, not to take any rabbit trails, but I'll say this, West Coast, we are so blessed that God chose for this to be the final place for him to minister. You know, I'm telling you, I, what an honor. What an honor. This Southern California. What an honor. What an honor, amen, that, that God chose him to be here and that God chose us as a people, as a congregation in California. I'm talking about us, the body of Christ, all doing our part, amen, to minister to the family this week as things were being handled and processed, you know. And, uh, but it's exactly, you know, what he said. He said, I've been, I'm satisfied. God has filled my life. It's full. Now, did, did, now, did we want him to leave this early? No, I'm pretty sure Miss Carolyn's going to have a talk with him when she gets to heaven. But we know where he's at. Let me tell you, one of the greatest gifts that you can give your loved ones, especially your family, is them knowing absolutely where you go. Because there's nothing, there's nothing, there's such a worse feeling when you have families that come up and ask, Pastor, where are they? You know? And I always tell people, don't make the preacher lie at your funeral. Right. To where you're talking about someone in a way like, oh, well, you know, they love God. They're such a good person. Everybody's going, did I go to the right funeral? That dude, dude was a jerk, man. You know, she was a witch. You know, she was all seven of the deadly sins. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and, 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 and. And so it's important to live a life, amen, that testifies to the goodness of God. And Dr. Seville, he definitely did that, amen. He definitely did that, amen. What a beautiful man. What a beautiful, what a beautiful way to, 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 to leave this earth, amen. And again, I, I read, uh, you know, what I said over here in Ecclesiastes 7.1. A good name is better than precious perfume, and the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. And, and, and there's other reasons for that being a great day, because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be immediately present with the Lord. And in his presence, there's fullness of joy, pleasures evermore, amen. We know that when you're with him, amen, you're going to enjoy everything, amen, that heaven has to offer. And for Dr. Seville, amen, the moment that he left this earth, the next thing he seen was the face of Jesus better than any day he's ever seen Jesus. The Bible says you and I, we see the Lord, but it's like through tinted glass, amen. But when we are there, how many know the Bible says we will see him face to face? Amen. And I've just been rejoicing, amen, all day going, Lord, I, I can't even wrap my mind around the reception that my pastor must have received when he walked through those pearly gates and God said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. It just blessed my heart because, you know, I, I, I'm a disciple of Christ, but I've been a disciple of Jerry Seville. Amen. I've been a disciple of his ministry and, you know, and I thank God for the, the, the investments, amen, that have been made. And, uh, and I appreciate and I value so much Miss Carolyn and, and, the, and the family, especially, you know, Jerry Ann and Terry, because I know that as a pastor, amen, the, the, the first family, amen, we, they sacrifice more than anyone will ever know. Amen. And they gave him to the Lord a long time ago. 
amen, gave him to all of us. And I told Miss Carolyn and the girls, I said, you know what? I said, I am only one of millions and millions of people, I said, that are the benefactors of the sacrifices that you made. I said, thank you so much. I said, for positioning him to fulfill the call of God that was on his life. I said, because we are forever changed. Amen. Now he's up there enjoying what God had for him. And this is part of, you know, the, 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 the passing being one of the, you know, the, the, that end of life here being one of the greatest things the day that you die. For them, it's seeing the Lord face to face. It's entering in. It's knowing that you, ain't gotta, you don't have to deal with the things that we have to deal with while on this earth. Amen. We are here as ambassadors of Christ, but we still have to deal with the crooked devil that's on this earth. How I many know he's playing with the footstool? Amen. Even though he's a loser and even though we know uh, we've read the back of the book, you know, he loses all the time. You know, he's still going to make weapons that won't prosper, but he still makes weapons. And you have to deal with that. You got to deal with people. You know what I'm saying? I love Jesus, but sometimes, man, I've already slapped somebody seven times in my mind. <laughs> Come on. You know, I'm just human, you know, but man, when you are there, it's like, man, you're talking about glorified. And in such a beautiful place, and that's where he's at. And the other thing that it does, listen, you know, it positions all of us that were divinely connected, amen, to have opportunity to lay hold of a mantle that is available to all that were. Because let me tell you something. Make sure I say this right. How you connect is how you collect. When you're connected, amen, you're collecting. Amen. And you're able to draw. You become like if, if you hadn't seen what Pastor Justin Bridges ministered yesterday at HFCC. Let me tell you something. You need to watch that video, that, what, what he shared. You know, we are partakers of those graces. We're the benefactors of it. Amen. And so, you know, here we had one Jerry Seville. And there will always be just one Dr. Jerry Seville. But I'm telling you, but through, through his ex, and I'm telling you, that means that all these sons and daughters that have been divinely connected, you know, I'm talking about his, his family first and foremost, man, his daughters, they have a, they, that's their birthright. But how I many know all of us, amen, that have sowed and served and supported and have stood with and have lifted up, amen, we have a right to, to partake of that. And so through, through that one seed, Amen. It's going to come much harvest. Amen. Amen. Because we're going to take all that we knew and we're going, to, we're going to spread it out that much more. And so it really is a beautiful thing. It's hard for us sometimes to wrap our minds around that because for us, we feel the absence. But, man, I rejoice today in knowing exactly where my pastor is at. And I rejoice that he finished strong. How about you? Amen. Amen. Praise God. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, it says this. Remember them which have rule over you and who have spoken into you the word of God, whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. Now, let me read this to you in the Passion Translation. Don't forget, amen? Everybody say that, don't forget. forget. Come on, tell the person next to you, don't forget. It says, don't forget the example of your spiritual leaders who have spoken God's messages to you Take a close look at how, they li- how their lives ended and then follow their walk of faith. I'm looking at his end going, God, I want to have that end and so much more. I'm like, Lord, he set the bar high, but for me as a son in the faith, it's like I know as a spiritual father myself, I want my spiritual sons and daughters, the people that God's entrusted to me in that capacity, I want them to go further, farther, higher, and be stronger and greater than anything I ever could be, anything that I could ever arrive at. I know if I do things right, amen, they will will get there quicker than me. They can learn what I learned by not having to go through all the things I had to go through to, to, to do that. And as I get older, my sons and daughters in the faith, this is what happens for us, amen. When you got spiritual offspring, they become your greatest feeding grounds. Because there's stuff coming out of them that you didn't put into them. But, man, you're going, man, look what's grown up. Look what's coming out. Amen. And I think that we're going to see more and more of people that have been connected 
you know, through that and through him, I believe we're going to see a whole lot more of him showing up in people's pulpits and in ministry. I believe that with all of my heart. Amen. But it says that we need to remember. We need to remember them. Amen. We need to remember what they've done. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 7, it says the memory of the just is blessed. Now, let me say this. That's not an Alzheimer's and avoid dementia scripture. I mean, you can use it for that. Somebody got it. Thank you very much. The memory of the just is blessed simply means this is that, man, when someone, amen, when someone that has made an impact in your life, when you think about them, you have all kinds of things that just cause a great smile to come to your face. That cause you, amen, to light up because you remember, amen, the things, amen, that they taught you, the things that you experienced with them, the things that you enjoyed with them, and, and it blesses you. Even though they might not be here, it blesses you. You know, every time I'm around silverware, you know, especially in the Philippines, you know, Pastor Kathy will pull out a knife and she'll start doing this thing where she puts it right here and start. Because when me and Leanna weren't saved, she, like, she used to like throwing knives at me. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I almost got me in the head one time. One time I was just a little bit too drunk, and I, I got a, a fork in the leg. And so Pastor Juan would always go, watch out, Josh. And he'd get a knife, and he'd go, you know. He'd go, Eliana. You know, and when we think about that memory, you know, it just brings joy to us. We, <laughs> except I, I still walk with a little bit of a limp, amen. <laughs> but there's things you think about. I think about Dr. Seville when we were in Tanzania one time in, in uh and they had the media team there. Terry was there. It was the last time she went over there to Tanzania. And uh, the chief had a box, that, a, a gift that he wanted to give Dr. Seville for all of the, the, the things that he had done through the years, also all the humanitarian work. And so in this particular area of Tanzania on the outskirts of Arusha, they eat guinea pigs. Those things that are your pets at home, <laughs> throw another shrimp on the barbie, you know what I'm saying? So he had this big old fat guinea pig that he's going to present to Dr. Seville. And, and we seen Terry just down the road with the Shook brothers doing a little infomercial for the PC cabinet or, you know. And so I'm with Dr. Seville and we're there and I'm like, let's have him give it to Terry. <laughs> so Chief's like, all right. And like, okay. So when Terry came over, it was like, man, we made sure. Get those cameras rolling right now. And Chief's like, ooh. And we put Terry up there, and Terry's standing there, and the chief, you know, he's, he's saying, you know, we just appreciate, you know, the ministry of Dr. Je you know, they used to say Jelly Seville, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and we appreciate all the things that you've done, your investments into our children, our widows, you know, our lives, and we have a gift that we want to present to you from our tribe. And, you know, anytime you hear the word delicacy, you're in trouble. <laughs> just know that. And so I, I'm watching Terry. I told her I'm going to find the video. <laughs> I know I have it. And you can see her, she's standing there like, okay, you know, but you can see her processing, what's in the box, 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 in the box? you know, and the chief's talking, and we're all standing there going, yeah. and, and Dr. Seville looked like the cat that ate the canary, man, he's just standing off like this, and then all of a sudden, you see this little hand come out of one of the holes, and Terry just went like, why does this sheet, like, and then, it wasn't enough to give it to her in the box. The chief decided to take the guinea pig out and hand it to Terry. And Terry's, I told her, I told her I'm going to get a shirt that has a picture of you holding that thing, and it's going to say, Terry Tough on it. Terry Tough. And she held it. She goes, I screamed. I said, no, you, you screamed on the inside, Terry. You didn't scream. I was there. But Dr. Sue was just laughing. See, memories of the just, blessed. When I think about your guys' wedding and that big old rock you got there, man, you set the bar high, Doc. <laughs> it blesses me. We all have memories of different people in our lives that might not be here. Man, your grandpa, I loved having coffee with him. Love having coffee with that man. There's just certain things that trigger good memories. When it's the memory of the just, righteous people that always did you right. I had, I've never had a bad moment with my pastor. And we've gone through bad things together, have we not? But no bad ones. And when I think of those things, the Bible says, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. You know, come on, those things that add to your life, add peace to your life, joy to your life. Think on those things. Amen. Amen. So that's what I'm doing. I, I'm not just focusing on my, 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 my father in the faith's exit. Amen. I'm focusing on the impact. And the investments that he made, and I thank God, thank you, Lord, for all these wonderful times, especially 
this last Sunday and the things that he spoke and shared with me outside of this room. It blessed my heart so much. So the memory of the just is blessed. And I love it the way it says it in the Passion Translation. The reputation of the righteous becomes a sweet memorial to him. Oh, a sweet memorial. And now I'm going to give you another one. This one's really good. This one will make you go, mm, that's really good, Pastor. In the early reader version, amen, that's where I start. It says, good people leave memories that bless us. Amen. And that's the thing is we are left with, we're, we're left with his absence, but we are not left without memories. We're not left without the standard and the good things. Thank God for all of the teachings. Thank God for all of the cassettes, the real to reels. Thank God for the DVDs, the CDs, the MP3s. Thank God for the Bible college that he, thank God for all of those things, amen, that he laid up, amen, that, can, that we can keep in front of us, amen, because how many know he's alive? He's just on the other side, amen, waiting for you and I to finish our course. Somebody say amen. 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 Now, um, for me as a person, and this, this, this one's personal, um, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 19 through 24, when Eliana and I, when we were pioneering this church before we ever started, the Lord had me change my covering. Some, some things had changed in the ministry I was a part of. And you'll be like the company you keep. And the Lord told me your pastor's no longer the man he was when I had you start following him. That's, that's a hard thing. And it was the hardest thing I ever had to do was when the Lord told me you have to change your covering. And I'd been blessed out three times and called back. But the third time I couldn't be put back in the box, is like, I was free to go. But the Lord said, you know what? He said, He's not in love no more. And uh, you have to change your covering. And I thank God, you know, he's, he's in love now. My, my, my first pastor is doing great. So, so, so happy. I love him as much today as I loved him my whole life. But when the Lord told me I had to change my covering, it was the hardest thing. It was the second hardest one of them that I had to ever do. I apologize. And, uh, and I said, God, where do I go? I believe in being a man under authority. Let me talk to you today, body of Christ. You should be submitted to somebody. Because if you're not, if you're on your own, amen, yeah, that's, that's the purest definition of pride. Dr. Barclay taught me that. Pride simply means this. You're on your own and you don't listen. It means you don't answer nobody but yourself. And let me tell you something about pride. I'm going to throw you some freebies right now. Pride is like bad breath. You say, how is it like bad breath, Pastor? Everybody knows you have it but you. Give me an amen, right? Come on, write that down right there. Come on, Renee, you got to use that this, this Sunday, brother. Huh? You're on your own and you don't listen. The Bible says the man that had the greatest faith was the man that, was un that understood and was under authority. Amen. I'm like, Lord, I, wanna, I find comfort in being submitted. Amen. It keeps you from pride. keeps you from getting arrogant. keeps you from getting weird. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why some people have ministries all on their own outside of a church because they're rebellious. You know what I'm saying? You say, well, I'm not rebellious. Well, all right, how many churches have you been in the last five years? Enough said right there. But, Lord, help me, Lord. So I, I believe in being under authority. I said, God, where do we belong? And he told me, he said, submit your life and submit your ministry to Dr. Jerry Seville. He said, he'll be your covering. At the same time, when I came up here, he told me, he said, you know what? He said, you go meet Pastor Juan Juarez and Pastor Billy Rash. He said, they'll be your friend. And them and their wives and their churches have been that to us. But with Dr. Seville, I just wrote him a letter, and I didn't go into details. I just said, this is who I am. I'm 33 years old. We're starting a church in a city that's eight hours away from any family, four hours away from anybody we know. But I know I'm in my promised land. I know that I'm here for life, and I'm on network ministry around the world. We're going to raise up a good church, and we're going to plant churches all over the surrounding areas. 
I said, and sir, if you would, please consider taking us in. And he wrote me back, and I shared this, I know, on Sunday night. And he wrote us back a personal letter. It wasn't nothing big, but it was enough. He said, we receive you. He said, if there's anything that we can do, he said, to be a blessing to you, just let us know. All I needed to know was that. I was a man under authority. He didn't ask me to prove it. Now, I know everybody always says, I'm going to be with you for life. Man, how many times have you heard that? Yeah. Oh, pastor, I'm with you for life, man. God led me to this church, man. The only way I'm leaving this church is in a casket. And I've heard all that. I'm like, how about we start with you being faithful to show up? Huh? That way you quit getting visitor cards every time you walk through the door. And you've been going to this church for 20 years. All right, I know I'm, I'm I, maybe I give me a little leeway. I'm grieving right now. I'm grieving, okay? So take it easy on the pastor, amen? <laughs> and so I would write him a letter every month and just tell him, hey, this is what I'm doing. He didn't ask for it. I just did it because I want to be accountable. And then as things grew, you know, uh, you know, uh, I was able to, I had already been ordained. I already went through Bible college, and, but he received us, and he ordained us, and he told me some things that I always wanted to hear from my first pastor, and, and I never did. And he simply just told me the day I was being ordained, he said, I'm proud of you, Josh. He said, I should have done this a while ago. He said, but I'm proud of you. And it just, not that we need to hear that. It's just something that you like to know. Because as a son, I want to know my father's pleased with me. And so every time I'd write him a letter, almost every time, I would always include this portion of scripture because it captured the kind of heart that I have. I had it for my first pastor. I have the same heart for my pastor. And anyone that, that is my mentors or my father figures. In the Philippians chapter 2, verse 19 through 24, this is what the Apostle Paul was saying to the church of Philippi concerning Timothy. And I'm going to read out the Passion Translation. It says, Yet I am trusting in our Lord Jesus that I may send Timothy to you soon so I can be refreshed when I find out how you're doing. Timothy is like no other. He carries the same passion for your welfare that I carry in my heart. For it seems as though everyone else is busy seeking what is best for themselves instead of seeking of the things that are most important to our Lord Jesus Christ. You already know about his excellent reputation since he has served alongside me. It says, I love the Amplified, it says like a, like a son serving with his father. He has served alongside me as a loyal son in the work of the ministry. After I see what transpires with him, he's the one I will send to you to bless you. And I'm trusting in my Lord to return to you in due time. I've always said, Lord, that's the reputation I would like my pastor to have of me. I think that's a good thing for everybody to want from their pastors. Amen. To, to, to be able to have folks say, you know what? You're like your pastor. You know? Greatest compliment I ever received was being in the Philippines one time with Lewis and the team. And I remember there was these two ladies there. And I could see they were talking. and kept going back and forth the whole time I'm preaching. And then when I got done, they both came up. They said, we've got to ask you something. They said, are you Jerry Seville? I said, uh, no. I said, I'm Josh. And I said, I, I said, that's my pastor. And she goes, I told you, I told you. She said, the whole time you were preaching, I kept telling her, that's Jerry Seville. <laughs> yes. Now, how many of us, it's a beautiful thing, amen. You, can, you don't have to look like your pastors. You don't have to dress like your pastors. You don't have to cut your hair like your pastors, but you better sound like your pastors. <laughs> Amen. Because the sheep know the shepherd's voice and another voice, the Bible says, they won't follow. Amen. So for me, I'm like, I thank God. I make a great me and a lousy you. You know what I'm saying? You have to be yourself and let God use you the way he wants. But that was the prayer that I've always had and I still have with, you know, the, the, the other fathers that I do have that are still here. But this one right here, everybody knew Dr. Seville was my pastor. You know. Everybody knew. I remember when I met Terry Mize, you know, in, at one of Dr. Barclay's meetings. 
And uh, he came in. I, I, I knew who he was. He didn't know, I'm like, he don't know who I am. I'm just Josh. And uh, someone there knew him, and they greeted him. I just said, hello, you know, nice to see you. Brother Mike says, I'm, I'm Josh Bolger. He goes, oh, I know who you are. And I'm like, he knows who I am. And he goes, you're Jerry Seville's Josh Bolger. And I said, yes, I am, sir, right here. <laughs> Right here. I was like, I like that title, eh, amen. But uh, just precious things like that. Again, memories. Beautiful memories, amen. It's a beautiful thing when folks attach you, amen, with someone of that caliber. You know what I'm saying? Versus folks going, because I hear this every time I go through TSA. They look at my passport. Bolger. (laughs) Can I ask you a question? (laughs) Anyway. But I, I, I share these things today just to encourage you. Amen. Because maybe you've had some loved ones that have passed. Maybe, maybe Dr. Seville's passing didn't ring your bell like maybe another loved one's passing. But I want you to understand death is not a bad thing. The Bible says that there's no sting in it for us. We don't fear death. To live is Christ, to die is gain. Amen. And sometimes life happens and we don't always have all the answers. But we, there are certain things that we absolutely know. That when you leave here, you go immediately there. Amen. If you're serving the Lord. Amen. amen. If you've committed yourself. And we also know, amen, that, that there's a reward for us. And I remember Dr. Savelle, and this is the last thing I'm going to say concerning this, because then I want us to pray for the family and for the ministry as we close. I remember one time he was telling us this story, and I, I shared this, this story with the family. He was telling us about there was some missionaries. I don't remember, I don't recall the name, the name of them, but... There was a plane that had uh, some folks that were doing missions work that had, it was crashing. And as the plane was going down, there were two people that survived, right? And I think there was five that didn't make it. And as the plane was going down, they knew they were going to crash. And this is what the survivor said. And this is what he told us. He said, as the plane was going down, they said that they looked at the, they were looking, you know, they're all in their seats. And so they're seeing each other. And they said, all of a sudden, the, the five that didn't, the, the five that graduated to heaven, you know, while they were on assignment. If you're going to go, man, that's where I want to go. You know what I'm saying? Some folks, I just want to die in my bed. I'm like, man, let me be at the pulpit, Lord. Let me finish with amen, and then there he is. <laughs> but that ain't happening. I, I'm taking the train with you when that trumpet sounds. So you ain't got to worry about me going nowhere. I got to work to do, amen? amen? I know I do. But he said that it was, they said it was like they fell asleep. They said their spirits had left their body, they said, before we ever crashed. They said all of them. It was just like they just. And I thought of Stephen. And this was what I was meditating on when we were coming home from the Philippines. As you, many of you know, I started that series on, you know, focusing on the unseen, right? And you're never alone. So there's things that, there's some things that have been stirred with this. I'm just not, right now I don't want to process things. I just want to take care of my spiritual mother mother and my friends yeah. as they take care of me. And uh, I thought of Stephen to where the Bible says, man, he was, he was preaching. He was telling them about what they did to Jesus. And all. He was talking about who Jesus was, and then he dropped the hammer. You did this. They got mad at him, started ripping their clothes, decided they're going to stone him. And what does the Bible say? He looked up. At the moment, he's in one of the situations that folks would say, death's the worst. He looks up and he says, I see the heavens open. And I see the Son of God at the right hand of the Father. Man, they got wicked, but how many know the Bible says he just fell asleep? That's what I believe happened with my pastor. Amen. So find comfort in these things. Find comfort in knowing I'm all right. Do I cry? Yeah, I cry. I love my pastor. I love him tremendously. You know, and I'm going to miss him being here. But I know that we don't have too much longer before we're all on the other side. Amen? All right. Let me give you a doggy bag on some stuff, and we're going to pray. Can we please put up that graphic? Our pastor said three things on Sunday night, and I want to make sure that we have these three things in front of us. Remember, he said this. He said, this is what the Lord told him to tell every church everywhere he goes, 2024. Number one, stay in faith. Stay in faith. Amen. The just shall live by faith. Right? Habakkuk 2 verse 4, Hebrews 10, 38, Galatians 3, 11, Romans 1, 17. 
Stay in faith. Amen. Where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So stay in the word. Amen. Stay in the word. Amen. That's where we're supposed to live. Amen. Number two, remain focused on the promise of God. Stay in the word. Stay in the word. Don't let go of the word of God because things are challenging. Hold on, knowing that God never lied to nobody. He ain't going to lie to me. He will do what he said. So stay remaining focused on the word of God. Why? The promises of God. Because what you give attention to, you give. Man, you're a good church. You give power to it. And number three. Come on. What have we been talking about for like the last two years? Stay, avoid what? Distractions and attractions. Amen. Devil mess you up with that. Amen. Your greatest spiritual warfare is going to be distractions. Hands down. Think about it. Don't allow anything to distract you. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Amen. Don't allow nothing to take that away. Now, I have a gift. How many like gifts? Uh, we had this made up for you, church. I got uh, one for every one of you. But this right here are all of the scriptures that Dr. Seville used when he ministered here on Sunday night. And so we have those available for you after service. I wanted to be able to give you something, amen, that you can hold on to. And so, we go with that here? That's good. You can have this one. Oh, man, then y'all give it to Michelle. I love you, Michelle. Got one for all of you. But check this out. The Lord told me to put this in front of all of us, not just in the room, but those of you that are watching. We need to pray, amen. Pray for our spiritual mother. Pray for Miss Carolyn Seville and the entire family, the JSMI staff and ministry team. Now, there's questions that they have, and they have to set all that stuff aside till next week. You know, it's over. But be praying for them, amen. Be praying for their partners around the world, amen. And pray extra also for Brother Copeland, who's been his best friend for 55 years. So pray for the Copelands and their family, because, you know, and also pray for Brother Jesse and Kathy Duplantis. Just friends. I know there's more friends. I'm just telling you, just say a little something extra for them if you wouldn't mind. Amen. And then partners of JSMI, if you're a partner of JSMI, amen. If you're a partner of JSMI, keep supporting. Keep connecting. Amen. Continue sowing your best financial seeds. Continue to pray. Amen. Uh, in, and sow into the ministry of JSMI. Amen. The vision is stronger than ever before. I'm telling you, this is where it gets taken to the next level. I look at when Pastor Juan, you know, started the party without us. I think it was like 20 salvations that Sunday. Amen. And the ministry's doing greater now than it's ever done. He finished strong. Amen. He laid a foundation and threw some material on it for the next generation to grab a hold of and raise it up. And they have. That's what we're going to do with what's been invested in us. But be true to your partnership. Covenant isn't just, you know what I'm saying, for a moment. It's for a lifetime. Amen. You got to take care of Mephibosheth. Amen. And then also Dr. Seville's memorial service. If you haven't found out, it's on uh, 426. That's next Friday at 1.30 p.m. Central Time. I believe that's what that is in Texas. Uh, and that will be held at KCM. And they will be broadcasting this over the Victory Channel. Ms. Carolyn, I want to make sure that I told you all that. Uh, so please, if you can't go, uh, please tune in and, and show your support. Amen. You can be a part of that. And then I also want to say this, you know what, when it comes to information, go to the JSMI, Jerry Seville Ministries International, go to their webpage, uh, their social media, same thing with Heritage of Faith, go to theirs, amen, so that way you get correct information as well as updates. Because how many know, you get all kinds of freaky people that like posting all kinds of crazy stuff just to get a bunch of clickbait and Get a bunch of views, you know. You had people that were doing stuff before the family in the ministry team. Before the ministry team even found out, you had people that knew. Yeah. That should never happen. You know, and you have people that are not waiting for the ministry. Let the ministry present itself first, and then we follow. Amen. And so it, it, uh, it's important, amen. Uh, and so I, I encourage you to do that, you know. Um, I, I can't stress how important that is, Amen. Um, you know, um, so, and then also take the time to share a testimony. If you go on, if you go on there, you'll see they have a place for people that would love to share something, a memory of, you know, again, the memory of the just is blessed, a memory of how Dr. Seville's ministry touched your life, changed your life, had an impact on your life. And I'll tell you why this is important because right now they're like me. I, I got like 500 messages on my phone 
that I haven't even touched because I've been focused on taking care of my responsibility, which, which is doing my part, you know, uh, with, with helping them. And, uh, and it's, it's important to them because they're going to go back and they're going to want to see what you said. And that right there is part of the memorial. That's part of the legacy. That's part of showing them the honor and the appreciation for their sacrifice. They already know it was worth it, but I'm telling you, your testimonies just sweeten it that much more. Amen. Them knowing how much he meant to you and the impact that he made. So, so please take a moment to do that. And then the final thing I'm going to say with this is do not believe. Come on, tell your neighbors. Do I got to add some rev on it? Mm. Yay! Yeah. Hey! Do not, yeah, believe everything that you read on the internet. How many know? Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Don't believe everything that you see and hear on the internet and social media. I'm telling you, I don't know if Facebook has ever made the lame to walk, but I think that we can all agree it has made the dumb to speak. You agree with me? So, all right, I'm on. Just telling you, man, watch out. Don't respond to people. Don't get into it. You know what I'm saying? Don't make me send the church mafia to go take care of stuff, you know, because folks are getting dumb. Amen. But just leave, leave that kind of stuff alone. Amen. I'm going to give you a last thing. Come on, every preacher got three closings. Here's a word of wisdom. Don't waste words on people that deserve your silence. All right? Uh, you don't need to respond to critics. You don't need to do anything to defend. Amen. Let me tell you something. Dr. Seville, his name defends itself. Amen. And the ministry defends itself. And so just, just know that. Don't believe everything you read. Because there's a lot of dumb stuff on there. We were there. We were there. We know what happened. We know what's going on. Amen. Don't believe what people have to say. Okay. Let's stand to our feet at this time. There. You guys didn't want to say it. Yeah. A a after we pray, uh, I'd like all of the chariots or riders that are here just to hang out over here for a second. And we we've got one thing we want to share with you guys real quick. Praise God. Did this help anybody tonight? Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I pray. I, I, I prayed all day just for God to give me something that would help. And uh, he gave me what I need. And I'm like, Lord, I'm going to look like a weirdo going up there because I'm so happy right now. I know where my dad's at. I know what he's done. And I couldn't be happy. I'm going to miss him. But I'm like, man, dad, you know what? If you're out of here, that means that we're ready. We're ready. We're ready to take what he, that baton that he passed to us. Amen. We're ready to take it to another place. And I, and I know, I know that. So many of us, man, we're going to miss him. He, 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 I know you love him like I love him. And, uh, but I, I just pray, God, I just want to bring peace to people today, amen. But I want us to pray right now. And if you wouldn't mind, would you just lift your hands and, and just release your agreement with me? We're not going to pray long, but we're definitely going to pray the right things. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for who you are. You are the resurrection and the life. <laughs> Lord, you are the one mighty God, Lord, that paid the highest price, Lord, so that we can enjoy the greatest life. And Lord, we thank you for this beautiful life that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us this beautiful salvation. And we thank you, Lord, for the people, Lord, that you've used to help us on this journey, Lord. The people, Lord, that have, have paid the price, Lord, to be used by you in ways that are not common to everyone. And Dr. Seville was one of those men. And we thank you, Lord, for his ministry and the ministry of Carolyn Seville. We thank you, Lord, for everything that they've done for us, Lord. Lord, you used him, Lord, since 1969, Lord, to pour his life out into people like us. And we are a grateful people. We pray for the first family right now. We pray for them. We pray, Lord, just added graces. We pray for the comfort and the ministry of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, surround them, Lord, with heavenly hosts, Lord. Surround every one of them, mighty God, Lord, with your peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. Let there be a fullness of joy, mighty God, so that there may be peace. 
And Lord, we pray, keep them from evil, keep them from harm, keep them from every stupid person, Lord, that would say something nasty, Lord. I pray that, Lord, personally. Protect them, mighty God. Surround them with people, Lord, that love and value not only Dr. Seville, but Lord, they love and value this family for who this family is, mighty God. Because as we love him, Lord, we cannot help but love those that he loved. And we pray, Lord, for the ministry team and the staff, Lord, and all of the international directors. We pray for Bill Horn and Joe McCroskey, Lord. We pray for, for so many of them, Lord. We pray, Lord, for, for, for their hearts, Lord, that they would have peace, Lord. We know, Lord, that the legacy, Lord, is going to continue, Lord. The ministry is stronger, Lord. He told me Sunday it's stronger than it's ever been. And, Lord, we thank you. It's just going to continue, Lord, to get stronger, Lord. It's going to continue to have more impact. And so we pray, Lord, for every one of them. And we pray for their precious partners, Lord. All of those, Lord, that you laid it on their hearts, Lord, to stand together, Lord, to send him to places like Bakersfield, Montebello, <laughs> Chino, <laughs> Delano, Visalia. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for sending them, Lord. We thank you for those partners, Lord. Reward them, Lord, for their seeds and their sacrifices. And Lord, we pray for Brother Copeland, Lord. We know, Lord, his heart is is touched right now, Lord. Brother Duplantis and so many others. We lift them up, Lord. We lift up these generals in the faith, mighty God. Lord, we just pray for them and their families, Lord. We pray, Lord, be with them. Heavenly Father, we just pray for this memorial service. Lord, we pray, Lord, that it will capture capture the beauty of that man just the heart and the beautiful spirit Lord that he always had that he always displayed Lord we just pray Lord let it go into all the earth Lord and I pray for salvation Lord and testimonies to rise out of it Lord he's one of the greatest soul winners I've ever known mighty God and I thank you Lord I thank you Lord for all the ministry Lord that he started mighty God ministry that we will finish Lord and we just thank you Lord we thank you for everything Lord that's been birthed out of this and Lord we just pray Lord be with us I pray for all of these pastors all of these friends Lord all of these churches mighty God Lord, here and represented in the room, and Lord, those around the world, mighty God, Lord, we, we just stand together united in love, knowing that love never fails, Lord. We stand united, mighty God, Lord, as we uh, em embrace, Lord, this transition, Lord, as we accept, Lord, that his journey here is done, but Lord, he's, he's beginning, mighty God, Lord, a whole new chapter with you in glory. I just pray, Lord, added grace is upon us, mighty God. And I, I pray, yes, Lord, yes. Lord, again, I pray for the family. Especially, Lord, this year. Lord, this year will be the first of many firsts. But, Lord, I pray make it good times. Lord, let it be celebration, Lord. Let it not be grief. And, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Let our prayers surround them. Lord, let our prayers lift them up. Lord, let our prayers, Lord, be added, Lord, to to their peace, mighty God, and to their comfort, Lord. We thank you for that. And Lord, we pray for Heritage of Faith, Lord, every Heritage of Faith church, Lord, around the world, Lord. We pray for the pastors. We pray for the congregations. Lord, we pray for HFCC, especially in Crawley, Lord. Be with Pastor Justin and Pastor Annette, Lord, as they navigate and lead the congregation, Lord, uh, through this transition, mighty God. We just pray, Lord, Bless them. Lord, and may the yoke be easy, Lord. May the burden be light for all of us, Lord, as we walk this out. And Lord, I stand upon what Miss Carolyn said this week, Lord. There will be no grief allowed. There will be no sorrow allowed. And Lord, we stand with her and we decree it is so. And we just celebrate, Lord. We celebrate you. We celebrate the work that you've done in your son. And we celebrate, Lord, his victory. And, Lord, him finishing his course. And I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to have known such a great man. And I look forward, Lord, to the day that we be united again on the other side. We just thank you for all these things. 
all these things, mighty God. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost now for a little while, church? Seriando yo lo bosho koti ende yele le boho seti adada. Kuri anda yala bori anda ya seri ende yele boho tu yodo bo koti die. Seri ele le le boho sho sori anda yara bakase. Seti anda yala bakase. Hedi ando yodo bo koso. Suri ende yele bo kosho suri arabakase. Oh, mighty God, Lord, we celebrate, Lord. We celebrate life, Lord. We celebrate life tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this gathering, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the love and the faith, mighty God, Lord, that is in this room, Lord. We thank you, mighty God, as we stand together, Lord. We believe, Lord, that the rest of our lives are going to be the best of our lives because, Lord, you always have something beautiful. Lord, in front of us and in our future. And I just pray, Lord, let us take what we've received. And Lord, may it continue to minister to us, mighty God, today and in the days ahead. And Lord, may this service be used, Lord, to help others, Lord. I just give you all the glory. And again, I said thank you, Lord. Thank you for being an ever-present help to all of us this week. We thank you, Lord. Great is your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. I love you all.